At a bearing of 28 degrees latitude north and 16 degrees longitude west, a group of seven islands and numerous islets rise up out of the sea. With its warm climate and unusual landscapes, this archipelago has, from time immemorial, captivated those who reached its coasts. Here lay perhaps the last traces of the legendary Atlantis or the Elysian fields depicted by Homer in the Odyssey. They were, in short, the Fortunate Islands. The Canary Islands were never a part of any sunken continent. Their origin is quite different and much less romantic. About 30 million years ago, in what is known as the Miocene period, a crack appeared in the African platform. The magma found a way to escape from inside the Earth, and a group of volcanoes appeared on the ocean bed. Over the next 28 million years, the expulsion of material occurred almost continuously, and so by the time the Earth entered the Quaternary Era, all of the islands except for Hierro and the Islets had risen above the surface. The landscape is almost exclusively the product of volcanoes, which have provided new materials for the islands with each successive eruption. The basic lava flows, called Paoes, form the gentle slopes. They were very fluid and solidified slowly, so they covered large tracts of land before going hard. Rivers of molten material could flow down the sides of the volcano at a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. The opposite occurred when the lava was acidic. The eruptions were much more violent, the materials were much less fluid, and the resulting landscape was much more rugged. Volcanic activity also affected plant life on the islands. The continuous supply of new materials delayed the erosion process and so impeded the creation of soil where trees and bushes could grow. Lichens, a close combination of algae and fungi, were the first to spring up on the lava. Their unequaled powers of resistance enabled them to grow right out of solid rock, something which no other plant could do. Their work was essential. Little by little, they broke down the rock and created organic material. In this way, they prepared the soil for those species that would come after them. As time passed, some soil began to form between the lumps of rock. Herbs, which had adapted after millions of years fighting for survival, settled in these little nooks. Little by little, new species appeared. Specialization reached such an extreme level that up to 50 unique species can be found in the same volcanic crater. The Teide daisy, which is so similar to the common daisy, the tiny Teide violet, which has grey leaves that camouflage it until it flowers, or the stunning Tower of Jewels, are just a few examples of the variety of shapes sizes and colors to be found on the lava-covered slopes. Here in the foothills of the highest volcano in the archipelago, the Taide, the plants have taken another step in the adaptation process. Not only do they live in very poor soil, but they can also withstand differences in daytime and nighttime temperatures of up to 50 degrees centigrade. In these conditions, it is not surprising that Canaries has 520 of its own exclusive species, or in other words, 520 endemisms. This makes up 28% of the total flora and fauna. But it was not just the volcanic nature of the islands that caused this situation. 
If the islands had been in contact with the continent, the exchange of population would have been constant, but they arose from the sea, and it was the sea that isolated them. The arrival of new individuals was such a rare event that over time many species evolved independently, so creating new species.